16 or 24 gigs of RAM. Let me just show you. Welcome back. So I have an M4 Pro Mac Mini sitting over there with 24 gigs of RAM. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how it uses its memory. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up all the different apps that I use in my normal workflow. And then I'm just gonna show you how much RAM it's actually using. Is 24 gigs enough? When does it pass that 16 gigabyte threshold? It doesn't really work like that because there's something called cache in there, but at least you're gonna get some information from this. Also note that your workflow is gonna be completely different than mine. So this is just one data point in your search between 16 and 24 gigs if you have that question in your head, and hopefully this will help you. Okay, we're gonna start with no programs open. I just took a screenshot of this. So let's take a look at the 24 gigabyte M4 Pro Mac Mini right over here. So I actually have Activity Monitor open. I guess Activity Monitor is open because I have to have that open to show you. But if you go down here, and I just took a screenshot so I wasn't using any other applications, you can see it's kind of weird. It says memory used with nothing open, 8.39 gigabytes. But look at the cache. It's actually caching eight gigabytes of that. So it's really like, I mean, maybe we're using a half gigabyte. The cache file basically means that it's putting all that into memory to make things faster in your computer. It can lower that cache as you kind of use more memory, but wants to use a ton of cache here because I have all this memory. Take a look, I have 24 gigs. It's using zero swap also. And this is something you'd expect, obviously. So it's gonna use as much cache as it can to make things really quick until it needs the memory. But that's on my, M my 24 gigs over there. But let's just, a quick example, really quickly this computer right in front of me this has only got eight gigs this uh, iMac right here let's see what this does okay same thing with nothing open besides activity monitor if we go in here and take a look look at this so physical memory is only eight gigabytes on this look at it, it's way lower cache so this decided to only use 2.65 gigabytes of cache memory used is 4.55 you can see that it's basically using a little bit more obviously memory here but it's, it's, it's chosen to go a lot lower on the cache, right? And it does it because it doesn't have the memory to give up there. You can still see though the swap is basically zero. Even with eight gigabytes, obviously with nothing open, these are gonna perform very, very similar. This is only an M1 and this has only got eight gigs of RAM. That's an M4 with 24 gigabytes. But we're just talking about the RAM and the memory here. So let's keep moving here. Okay, so now I'm gonna open up all those apps on my M4 Pro 24 gigabyte Mac mini over there and just show you how everything, you know, as I open up the programs, how it starts using more and more memory or does it? It's kind of weird how it works, but let me show you. All right, let's start the test now. So right now I actually have, let's go down here. I actually have QuickTime open because I'm filming this. So that's running in the background and I have voice memos right here. So I'm gonna open this up because I'm actually recording this as well. So I have these two programs open because I have to record this, right? Let's go back and let's check Activity Monitor now. So we're gonna go back in here. We're gonna see that, look at it, it's still caching about eight gigabytes in here. Now it's using, it's coming down a little bit or going up, I guess, a little bit, but now it's using, look, 10.94 gigabytes, all right? So you can see in here, it's kind of fluctuating around. We're obviously under 16 still. Here's the physical memory in the computer, 24 again. If we go up here, you can see what are the top processes being used. Here's Activity Monitor. Here's Finder. So the ones I open up, QuickTime is only 21.7 megabytes. So it's not really using a lot of stuff here, but you can still see that we're still using about 10 gigabytes here. Let's keep opening stuff up here. Next, let's open up a browser. Okay, next I just opened up a browser. This is Safari, and I went to the Apple website. So let's just see what we're pulling now. So obviously we have three applications open now. Let's take a look back in here. Look at it jumped all the way up to 12.3. So you're gonna say, well, it's coming down a little bit, but you're gonna say, well, geez, it's using a ton. And uh, that's just only just three applications. But macOS does a really good job. You're gonna see in a second, it can open up a lot of stuff before it actually reaches that 16 and especially 24. Now let's go ahead and open more tabs here. Let's go ahead and open, just to start with, five tabs. Okay, so now we have five tabs open. This is kind of the secret here that you gotta watch. And I'm gonna show you something because it's gonna look like we're using way more memory than we really are. But take a look, I have the Apple website open. I have a Google website open. I have Yahoo open here. I have Bing and then I have ESPN. So just, these are some busy websites. We have those open. Let's take a look, go back to Activity Monitor. You're gonna say, look at this. It's using 16.8 gigabytes, all right? But let's take a look really what it's doing here. It's actually caching nine point, almost 10 gigabytes here. That means that when you open up stuff, it's gonna open up instantaneous. It's gonna be very quick. It's in cache. This cache would definitely not be as high if you only, you know, if you were, if you only had 16 gigs on the computer, since I have 24, you know, macOS knows that I have enough room in here, and it's caching a ton of files, as you can see here. It's going to definitely keep it below the 24 here. So hold on one sec. We're going to keep opening stuff up, and we're going to even open up more tabs later. But let's just see what happens when we open up more stuff. Okay, so now I actually open up my video editor, which is going to be CapCut. You can see it over here. 
And this is a pretty, I mean, obviously I don't do you know crazy editing or anything like that, but this is a pretty robust project. I mean, I have tons of files in here, as you can see, just tons of them. And I have a whole bunch of stuff on my timeline. So I'm not really doing anything when I'm showing you this because I'm, I'm not going to be actively working on this. But let's just go ahead and minimize this now. And let's just see where we are now. So by opening up that app, you can see again, we're only using 17.62 gigabytes, but it's still caching over 7. So if we do the difference on that, we know that's really basically, we're, we're using less than 10. We're using about 8, really. And it's just caching the rest here. You can see that. Because if you take the you know take this number minus the cache, and that's actually kind of what you're using because this is just in cache. So it's not that much right now and we're sticking right around 16 so again if you had 16 gigabytes you know it would be smart enough to cache less and you'd probably be using less than 16 since i have 24 it's really hard to tell me what 16 would be using but for 24 this is a really good example so anyways let's just keep moving here and we're going to keep you know let me just kind of minimize this here and then we'll come back in a second Next, I just open chat GPT. Now, if you're not running local LLMs, you usually will just have something like this, a window or an application in the background, and you can ask it whatever you want to do. So this is now open as well. I'm just going to minimize this. And now we have a ton of things open, all right? We have CapCut. We have QuickTime. We have voice memos. You know, we have Activity Monitor. We have, um, you know, what I just showed you, uh, obviously, <laughs> chat GPT, a whole bunch of stuff. So let's check out Activity Monitor now. It's not really changing much. Take a look. About 16 gigs. We're still way under 24, cached at 7.73. But let's go ahead and open up some even you know bigger stuff here, and we're going to see what happens. Okay, now I open up Keynote also. This is an app that I use to make my basically my thumbnails, or I just make screenshots with it, you can see in here. So here's a project I have going on. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. Let's go ahead and take a look again. Look at this. We're, we're barely moving up. We're at 17.38. Again, you got to minus this. So we're probably using about 10 gigabytes only, and we have all these apps open. But let's keep pushing it. Now, another app I use actually, and it's not Photoshop because I don't have it on here, and a lot of people will be using Photoshop, but I actually use an application. It's called Krita, and here it is right here. So this is very similar to a Photoshop. It's actually free if you download it from their website. If you download it from the App Store, I think it's like 12 bucks or something. But anyways, long story short, it's K, I believe it's K-R-I-T-A. So that's the name of this app. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. Again, we also have this in the background. We have all these things still open. And look at this. Now, we've jumped up a little bit. We're at 18.47. But you can see that the cache went down a little bit. It's caching a little bit less, but we're still well under 24 gigabytes. And again, if you had 16 only, you would see that we would still be fine because, you know, it's caching so much here. We're really only using about 12 gigabytes right now. Okay, so next, let's just open some small stuff. This is going to make almost no dent. We're going to open calculator. We'll have that open. Maybe I'm doing some calculations. We're going to open up something called, let me just see if I can find it. It's way over here, I believe. We're going to open up cooking timer. It takes a couple seconds. I don't know why, but there it is right there. So we have that open as well. We're also going to go down here. Let's just open up. Um, let me just see if I can find it in here. We're going to open up image playground. Maybe we want to create some images here, like this little Boston Terrier. So we have that open right now. So is it really affecting anything? Not really. Look at this. In fact, it's just jumped down, actually. It's jumped down because I'm not really using those more you know robust apps at the time. But you can see it's around 17.82. Now, we're going to use some of this stuff in a second to show you the difference. But so far, we have a ton of things open. Now, let's just open one more thing. I mean, on top of all this, let's just go ahead and open up pages. Maybe we want to go ahead and create an application at the same time here. So we're going to open this up. We're going to say create a document. Let's just open up this one here. So let's just say you wanted to now start working on a doc at the same time, but we don't want to shut this down. We're going to minimize that as well. So look at this. We're still in almost the exact same spot. 16.32. We're using about you know 10 to 12 gigabytes because obviously it depends what we're actively working on. We have all these different things open. Um, and I'll show you in a second how this affects it when I'm doing video editing and how it actually increases a little bit. That's the important thing. But right now, I mean, we have everything open down here. If you take a look, we have... Let's just kind of go. We have Image Playground. We have this little cooking timer. We have Krita. We actually have ChatGPT. We have Activity Monitor. We have CapCut, which is a total video editing processing you know program. We have Calculator. We have QuickTime with um, you know QuickTime Player. Review actually recording the video. Pages. Keynote. We actually have voice memos going. We have Safari with five tabs open. But let's go ahead and do a couple of things. Let's open more tabs now and see how this affects it. Okay, so next now we have 13 tabs open. This is about usually about what I have open. I know some people do 30 or 40, but I just want to show you 13 here. We're going to kind of minimize this really quickly. And again, we're in the same place almost. Look at this. It does a really good way of controlling the RAM. Obviously, you can see in here the memory. So we're not moving at all. And we just opened up 13 tabs plus all the other apps that I talked about. Okay, so next you might say to yourself, well, you're not actually using the apps. Well, now I'm inside this app right here. I'm playing it right here. And I actually have over here, you can see over here while it's being played here, 
it's not really affecting anything over here. You can take a look at it, what's going on over here. So that's not really important. But I mean, obviously, it's not so much about playing this thing. You know, if we go in here like this and we start doing, you know, let's just do transitions in here and we start fooling around with transitions and stuff like that where I'm adding transitions at the same time. I mean, and we go ahead and play it through transitions. We're going to see a couple of things over here. I mean, it's obviously going to go up just a touch here and there, but nothing, you know, you can see here. It's not really being affected that much, as you can see, as I'm doing different things. I'm not giving you a true, I mean, there's too much to do over here. If I was doing some crazy stuff, this might jump a little bit, but let's just go ahead and export this, all right? So we're going to go up to export over here, and I'm just going to give this a quick name, like test uh, one, two, three, just like that. It's 4K, obviously, that's a 4K video editor. We're going to do the bit rate as recommended. That's H.264, 24 frames per second. And we're going to start exporting this, all right? So let's go ahead and click export and see what happens next here. So it's starting to export over here. And take a look at what happens over here. Even while it's actively exporting, we're still using about 19.15 memory as far as gigabytes. But look at the cache files are still at 5.25. So that puts us around, you can see here, we're still using about 12 gigabytes of, of, of actual memory. And uh, we're not using any swap. And then finally, as a final check, you can see what I'm using here. I just opened up 40 more tabs, although they're all Google tabs, but 40 more tabs here that are open right now in, obviously, the browser. And we're barely, you know, we're not touching 20 gigabytes right now. And again, with the cache, we're not really touching 15 either. So of actual, you know, memory being used. So pretty crazy on how efficient this computer is. So this should give you a good idea. If you need more, you're going to know it. Okay, so as you can see, macOS does an incredibly good job of balancing your memory use. Even with all those applications open, like whatever there was, 15 of them, all those tabs, like over 40 of them. Granted, I wasn't completely using everything at the time. That all kind of equates into this, all right? As you use more and more and you're actively using it, it's going to use a little bit more. But it still never went over 24 gigs. It wasn't even close. Now, if you had 16 gigabytes only, as the example I was showing you, your computer's just not going to stop working when you go over 16. As I showed you, obviously, it's going to have cache in there. The cache is going to get lower, and ultimately, it's going to use swap, which is the SSD space. And it's going to maybe be a little bit slower, but I, I beg the question, for the average user out there, they're probably not going to notice even the difference unless they're checking activity monitor all the time. I mean, it's, it does a really good job, macOS, at kind of balancing that. And even though it's maybe wearing your SSD drive out a little bit, I've seen very, very, very few reports of it actually wearing them out ultimately, at least from the M1 up till now. Who, you know, who knows, maybe in another five years or something that might be a problem. But overall, it does a good job. So at the end of the day, what I like to tell people is 16 is for budgets. Obviously, if you can swing it, get 24. It's going to give you a little bit more room to work with there. But then people always ask me, well, what about 36? You know, what about 64? What about 96? What about 128? Well, I always say to people, the people that need 32 or higher, they usually know they need it already, all right? So if you're running local LLMs, for example, which we weren't, we went out to ChatGPT, which was on a website, we were pulling it that way. That's what 80 to, 80 to 90% of people do. They don't run local LLMs. In fact, I beg 2% of people run in local LLMs. If you're doing that, you already know you need the RAM. If you're running multiple you know, video editing at certain codecs that are crazy, you know, crazy fast and hard to keep up with, then you know you need more RAM. So you're the person that needs you know, more RAM, but you already know it. But for all the average people out there, 16 or 24 is really the question. And like I said, 24, if you can swing it, 16 will work fine. You probably won't even notice if you're just doing really basic stuff, not even video editing. And uh, at the end of the day, save the money. Anyways, I hope this little data point helps just a little bit on everyone out there searching. We will talk to you in the next one. Peace.